When we talk about the nation's courts, the Supreme Court gets all of the attention. But the majority of cases are actually decided by circuit courts. The circuit courts. Circuit courts. Twelve circuit courts. Which is why the Republican Party has prioritized circuit court appointments. We're going all out. We have unbelievably talented, smart, great people being put in those slots. So what's so important about circuit courts? First, we should explain what circuit courts are. When you say it's the court of last resort, that's it. This is Carl Tobias, a professor of law at the University of Richmond and expert on the federal courts. Carl says that while we spend a lot of time focused on Supreme Court decisions, circuit court judges do have enormous power and they are under the radar for most people. Here's how it works. The federal court system has three main levels. The district courts form the first level. They see about 360,000 cases a year. Decisions by district court judges can be disputed or appealed. If that happens, the case then travels up to one of the nation's circuit courts, who see about 50,000 cases a year. Circuit court decisions can also be appealed to the Supreme Court, but... The Supreme Court is extremely unlikely to hear any particular appeal, and only does so 100 times per year. That makes circuit courts the final say on most cases in the country. And circuit court judges are arguably the most powerful judges in the system, based on the sheer volume of decisions they make. So how are these judges appointed? First, a current judge has to retire or die. That creates a vacancy. The president puts forward a judicial nominee through a Senate confirmation process. The people who are confirmed serve for life under the Constitution. Throughout our country's history, both parties have had varying degrees of success with judicial nominations. But in the past few decades, the Republican Party has made circuit court appointments a top priority. You can look back to the 80s as a good starting point for when Republicans really made a serious push on owning the courts. This is our colleague, senior politics reporter, Jen Bendry. She spends a lot of time thinking and writing about our nation's courts and judges. There was a decision made by some conservatives at the time to look at the long game and figure out how to fill up the courts in a way that people hadn't done before. It worked so well that in recent years, Democrats have had a difficult time getting their nominees approved. Mitch McConnell in the Senate, very calculating and um, looking at the long game kind of guy, he orchestrated a plan to systematically block as many of Obama's judicial nominees as possible. McConnell and Senate Republicans only allowed President Obama to appoint two circuit court judges in his entire last two years in office. This is the fewest number of circuit court judges confirmed in a two-year Congress since the 1800s. And it's to his credit that Senator McConnell kept a lot of these seats open. This is Republican Ed Whelan, the head of the Ethics and Public Policy Center, a think tank in Washington, D.C. that, according to Ed, applies Judeo-Christian moral tradition to issues of public policy. So far, the Trump administration has had very impressive success in filling uh, vacancies on the courts of appeals. To date, Trump has confirmed 51 circuit court judges. By contrast, at this point in their presidencies, Obama had confirmed 26 and George W. Bush had confirmed 30. Democrats have vigorously opposed uh, so many of these nominees. They're record high votes against them. Because Republicans control the Senate, Republicans have been able to get uh, these nominees confirmed and appointed in the face of significant uh, Democratic opposition. Democrats' main reason for concern is that Trump's judges are more conservative than judges appointed by previous Republican administrations. This is not politics as usual. This is Derek Crow of People for the American Way, a liberal advocacy group that has been tracking the decisions of Trump's judges. According to Derek, the GOP is nominating highly conservative judges as part of an ideological culture war that they've lost with the broader population. It's a way of establishing essentially minority rule in our government. Some examples from the confirmed judges confirmed fears list include Amy Coney Barrett of the Seventh Circuit. In one case, she cast the deciding vote to deny a visa to the wife of a U.S. citizen. In another, Barrett voted to allow a corporation to racially segregate its workplaces. Stephen Graz of the Eighth Circuit. He holds very strong anti-abortion and anti-LGBTQ views. Graz also received a not qualified rating from the American Bar Association, the national group of lawyers that has evaluated judicial nominees since the 1950s. And now both of these picks have lifetime appointments.
These judges want to tear down decades of Supreme Court rulings that protect people. It's very scary because um, long after Trump's gone, um, you're going to have these people making choices. These are very anti-abortion, anti LGBTQ rights, anti-environment, anti-voting rights. One thing that both parties can agree upon is that Trump's judges are going to be the most impactful victory of his administration. Well, you don't get to write your own legacy, but I will say that what we're doing in the area of the courts, I think is the most important thing we're doing. I think that uh, President Trump's picks um, will prove to be outstanding judges for decades to come. Courts touch every aspect of your life, the separation of church and state, your ability to get reproductive health care or women's health generally, your ability to be who you are at work, your ability to breathe clean air, drink clean water. So the bottom line here is that there are some very young, very ideological, sometimes scary judicial nominees getting confirmed in mass and going into lifetime federal judgeships all over the country and they'll be making decisions that affect your life and that affect my life for decades.